Hello guys, my name is Diego Pacheco and this will be a different video. Today we're going to talk about Jupyter Notebooks. And um, Jupyter Notebooks are quite interesting because they pretty much allow us um, to do a sort of, um, you know, exploration and it's very much used by data scientists, uh, machine learning professionals and uh, big data professionals, right? But um, Jupyter Notebooks can also be used for uh, anyone who is learning something. Let's say you are learning uh, computer science 101, like algorithms, or you're doing POCs, or you are even trying to explain a refactoring that, you know, you, you have your code and you do a bunch of um, iterations over that code, or, you know, you're just documenting on your application, right? In all that cases, Jupyter is pretty much cool, right? So um, so basically, um, Jupyter Notebooks are based on in Python, all right? So you need to have Python 3 installed, and then you can uh, install Jupyter Notebooks with uh, pip, for instance. And once you install Jupyter Notebooks, you just run uh, Jupyter and Notebook in a folder, and um, Jupyter Notebook gonna start on that particular folder. So in this folder here, right, I have some notebooks, Notebooks, they have the um, uh, extension IPINB uh, as a IPython notebook, right? And here, as you can see, I have like a Java notebook, a Kotlin, a MATLAB, Python 3, Rust, and Scala. There are um, things in Jupyter called kernels, where uh, it allows you to have other languages there. By default, you're gonna have pretty much Python, but um, as you can see here in my Jupyter installation, I have Java kernel, I have Kotlin kernel, I have a MATLAB installed for it's a Python library. I have, of course, Python 3 kernel, uh, but I have a Rust kernel and also um, Scala kernel, right? And that's, um, that's not limited to that language. Like you can install other kernels like uh, Clojure or you know, other, other language like Groovy, for instance, right? So you can, there are so many kernels out there and extensions that you can take a look. So uh, let's take a look on uh, Jupyter uh, capabilities, all right? So on this folder where I have the notebooks, let me run Jupyter Notebook here. And it actually opened uh, in a different browser, but that's fine. I'm gonna copy here. Uh, there is this link with a token. And then here we are running Jupyter, right? So we have uh, Jupyter uh, up and running. So let me maximize this for you guys. And uh, here we basically see all the notebooks we had on that particular uh, folder, right? So if I open another tab here, my uh, console, you can see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven notebooks. And here we have exactly the same uh, number of notebooks, right? So in Jupyter, you're gonna see like a file system, uh, file system three vision where you're gonna see your notebooks, and you're also gonna see what notebooks are running, what clusters do you have. Right now, um, pretty much all cloud providers they have support for Jupyter. Like you can have a Spark cluster in AWS or in Azure, and then you can point your Jupyter notebook for that cluster, right? So you can you can sort of create a very interesting sort of a serverless experience, right? And, and the cool thing about Jupyter is the fact that, um, you know, you have, um, you have on the same document like code documentation and, and you can do that by steps, right? So, and I'm gonna show you guys in details in a moment, right? Um, so let's start with um, Python notebook, right? So I'm gonna open this on a new tab and this is the, the notebook, right? So. Basically here, uh, if you guys realize, I have three things here, right? So um, you can add uh, cells, right, in notebooks, and you can have as many cells as you want. And in my first cell, I have a documentation, right? And this is a markdown. You can see uh, sort of uh, the, the archetype here on this drop-down menu. And here I have a code, and this particular code is a Python code, right? Um, uh, I'm kind of uh, blocking your view, but let me reduce the size here so you can actually see the whole browser, right? So now um, it should be better for you guys. So you can see Python lo logo here, right? Because this is a Python 3 
uh, notebook, right? Uh, and basically here we have Python code. We can even do autocomplete. Like if you press, um, you know, tab, you can see uh, options as you can see here, right? So it, it, it's very cool. And if I want to execute something like here, I have a Python code, like I have two variable X and Y, and I'm, I'm doing a sum of them. I just press control enter and, and that will be evaluated. Oh, sorry, I, I, I type T here, so this function doesn't exist, so let me fix it, and then it works, right? And I can do stuff like, um, uh, let's say result is x plus um, x plus y, and then here you can just say result, and you can see that when I press tab, I also, I also have auto completion, right? And then uh, we see the same result. But the cool thing is like, you can keep doing these blocks, right? Like I could see here, um, now I want to do, um, let's say sub and I want to do, uh, X minus Y, right. And then I want to print something else like, um, uh, result, uh, sub here, for instance, right. And then you can see that works, right? Because X is, um, 10 and Y is 20. So that's why we got minus 10. So if we reverse the sub, right, we're going to get a positive number, right? But the cool thing about this, as you can see, um, you can add cells and you can do things in steps, right? And that's really cool because, um, like, um, you know, I can add like documentation cells between like code cells, like for instance, um, like here, let's say I can add another cell and then I can move this cell up and I can say this is like markdown and I can say, okay, so uh, this is uh, um, how we do a sub, right? And um, let me do something here. The idea uh, is we um, sun x, uh, was, sorry, we do a sub. The idea is that we do sub x, uh, y minus x, and it should be uh, 10, all right? And then we have, um, we have documentation here and we have code, right? And that's pretty cool because you have like uh, pretty much the language here. You can you can do pretty much anything on the language, right? Um, and that's really powerful. Like I said, um, uh, data scientists use this a lot to do discovery, right? And you can share this notebook with somebody else. And the cool thing about sharing this notebook is the fact that you're gonna have documentation and code and you're gonna have all the cells, all right? So, Think about a refactoring, for instance. A refactor is something very hard to express because it, it depends on steps, right? Like first do these and that and that and that, or tutorials or step-by-step uh, -step guides, right? In, in this way, you can write a sort of a step-by-step -step guide pretty easily and will be self-contained and self-documented, right? So that's really a cool future, right? So that's Python. Uh, we also can run other languages, like for instance, here I have Go, right? Uh, and here uh, I'm importing FMT because I want to print. Then I have a recursive function to do a factorial and then I'm printing here, right? So, and I, so I, I, you know, one thing I could do, like I could call for other values, right? Let's say I'm gonna call for this uh, four values here, right? And then we see four prints, right? And uh, we can see the goofer logo here, right? So now, now we, we have go. Um, and also, you know, let me save this one. I also did uh, for other languages, like I, like I said, I install other kernels, right? Like for instance, I have the Java kernel um, and then here uh, I have a markdown section and then here I have a Java code. And you can see I create a class even with an empty constructor, full constructor and two string. And um, you know, as you can see, I instantiated um, the code, uh, the class, right? I passed parameters to the constructor um, I, I even, it, um, you know, call it here. Um, and the reason why this is not running right now, as you can see this asterisk is meaning being processing, right? Starting the kernel. And the reason why you're having issues is because I have more than one Java on my machine. As, as you can see saying, oh, you have 53 and I was expecting 52. And the reason why is because my Java, right? Um, is a Java 15. So if I do like, um, for instance, uh, Java minus version, you're gonna see I have um, I have Java 15 here, right? And uh, sorry, I have Java 8 actually, but my my Java home I think is on uh, is on uh, 15. Yeah, it's on 15. Um, 
and but this kernel right that I have is for Java 14 so I have a because I have multiple Java's here I have a function to set to Java 14 and now now you can see I have Java 14 and if I just uh, run uh, Jupyter um, notebooks again now I just need to copy um, the new link here with the token all right so this one uh, this one here right let me go back there and then if I go back to the Java kernel right and if I just try to run this again now you see it works right so um, but to, to my point right like um like i said you know we, we can add more cells and let's say we can add now equals to a string or we can do a head factor or wherever right so that's like really cool and as you can see we can do so many uh, languages right um another language i have here is um uh, rust right so we can see here that i'm creating a variable and i'm printing that and i'm just gonna run it um and you can see it works all right and I also have Scala and um, and Kotlin, but I want to show something else for you guys. Um, like GitHub has a very interesting uh, future for um, Jupyter notebooks. It pretty much allows us to um, to see whatever content we have on the notebook on GitHub. So it's really cool. All right, so. Um, I made some changes um, on my notebooks, but this is like a local folder. As you can see, um, this is not um, this is not a Git repository, right? But I I pushed this this the previous versions of these notebooks to the internet, and um, and also what I want to show you guys is like if we go to my GitHub, right? And then we have like my notebooks. Like for instance, let's go to the Java one. Look how cool is this? So GitHub actually gonna interpret. The notebook right so we see um the documentation we see the code and we see the output of the code right so that's super awesome right like uh, if we go to the kotlin one we see i have a data class and i have a list of uh pojos the person object and then i have a bunch of processing here and uh, you can see uh the prints as well right um and that was kotlin uh my python one was the first one here I showed, all right. We can see it here. Um, Rust as well. And if we go to Scala, I have a Scala code here, and we also see the output, right? Uh, one, one cool thing is like if you have a chart and stuff like that, like in MATLAB, it also will render the chart for you, right? So you see here I'm plotting a chart and uh, and also shows the chart. So this is really cool because you can have much better documentation on GitHub with these um, Jupyter notebooks, right? So imagine something like Swagger, right? Where you have like code and documentation together and, and you can do stuff like that. And the cool thing is like, um, like for here, um, you know, I am using a library, right? So, so when we do this percent here um, and then something I'm saying, I want to import um, this library, right? So, so you need to have this um, library uh, installed in your uh, environment right like if I go back here let uh, let me go to the MATLAB one here yeah we can see here on the plotting right we can see that um, it just handled it and it works right so that's uh, Jupyter notebook uh, as you guys can see uh, there is a great integration between Jupyter and um, GitHub it provides you an awesome visualization and like I said, uh, Jupyter can be useful not only for data scientists to do sort of, uh, you know, discovery and data exploration, but also for, for any sort of an engineer or architect because you want to document your code, you want to document your service, and you want to have sort of a code and documentation together, you know, so that's really great for your consumers. They can have example code and they can play with that. And, um, you know, also that can be useful for your personal studies, like your POCs or like your computer science studies or algorithms or even for refactoring, right? Where you, you need to do several steps and you, you want to show the progress, right? So that's what I have it for today. I hope you guys like it. See you next time. Take care. Cheers.